I'm a little bit scared and maybe it's because I'm in a cemetery. As of now guys, I do not have prepared the title of this video, but I am promising a lot of fun. Why? Because I'm going to show you a very interesting city in Malta, which is one of the most historical. There's so many beautiful places. Also, I will take you in one of the most famous pasticceria. Without any further ado, welcome to Zeytun. I'm so excited about this video, simple reason because a few days ago I received a message from one of my viewers, a young beautiful girl from Malta named Katya, who lives here in Zeytun and she is from Zeytun and she told me, Alex, I would like to give you some tips whenever you're deciding to visit and record a video about Zeytun. I turned myself into a viewer and I asked her several questions. What is so famous over here in Zeytun? Why do tourists should visit Zeytun? What is the most important thing that I should cover while I'm filming in Zeytun? She answered all my questions and I'm dedicating this video to you, Katya. Thanks a lot for this. And guys, let's start exploring because I've been here for like half an hour or so already. Everything that I have seen, it is majestic. One of it, it's in front of me. Look at this. An absolutely amazing Maltese villa. Look at the design of it. Look at these plants that are on the facade. This looks amazing, I really like it. Everything is so traditional, guys. Let me zoom you in on this side. Look at this way, look at the other side. Everything is so, so beautiful. Let's start wandering around the city. So I will be showing you the beauty of it. And now I'm gonna start going one by one from those points of interest that Katya told me. By the way, I will be a little bit quiet while I'm filming this because you can hear even in the video, it's so silent. It's very, very quiet. And it's also very traditional. <laughs> I'm turning this into ASMR again. <laughs> there is a thing that I mentioned in several of my videos about the Maltese people, specifically the people from the South. And one of them are the people from Zeytun as well. They're very, very polite, very warm as well. And as you can hear, they are very quiet. You don't usually get that screaming and shouting from houses and kids running around and stuff like that. Everyone is quite well behaved from all these streets that I've been going around. And here it is. The first point of interest that Katya told me was the parish church of St. Catherine which is located in the main square. This, guys, is one of the largest parish churches on the island and it's often referred to as the Cathedral of the South, like the south of Malta. The architect was Lorenzo Gaffa, who is arguably one of the most important architects in Malta, who has his name behind a lot of the Maltese churches. And one of them is this. Also, I'm seeing the museum just right next to it. Look how beautiful this looks like. And of course, I have to be in this shot as well, but let me just try to find a good position so I can make a thumbnail. Maybe I can do something like, hold on, like this. Or wait, like this. And let me show you how it looks like from the front. We have the square on that side, but we are going down this way so that you can see another point of interest that Katya was telling us, which is just right the corner in this street. You can see how this street looks like, guys, but I wanted just to tell you that it's four o'clock in the afternoon when I'm doing this video, and apparently a lot of people are coming back from work, so the roads, they get so busy and it was a little bit loud. I was about to say it was a little bit loud over there and this is where we are heading to, to another part that it's loud. Anyway, I am so sorry guys that you have to hear this noise, but this is the reality of it. Anyway, I'm not gonna wait for them to finish and I'm not gonna say that they are blocking this building that I was about to show you. But anyway, this is the district court and I will put this here so that you can just take a photo of it. <laughs> I am laughing because I have a friend of mine who just told me that I am saying over here many times in my video, which I noticed myself as well. If you guys notice that I am saying over here most of the time in the video, please let me know. And if someone can count how many times I said over here in this video, 
I would like to see it in the comment section. <laughs> now, moving on, I wanted to show you another staple look. And I will zoom in for this as well. I will just leave this for a few seconds. Okay. What is this? This is the Church of the Holy Spirit. I'll leave this here as well. You guys can take a screenshot of it or you can just try to... Ah, yeah, this is very good. Take this QR code and you can get all the information. I don't know if it's allowed to go with a camera in a church. I think better no. So let's move on. Where was I heading to? Ah, yes, I was heading to another staple that Katya told us. Here it is, guys. Casa Perelos. This one was built by Ramon Perelos, who is the Grand Master, best known for the magnificent tapestries. He donated to the Church of St. John in Valletta, and he was frequently visiting Zeytun. And he built this palace here, over here, <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> And now it is a private residence. For me, it looks beautiful. I like it. And <gasps> hold on a minute. What's that? A dead body. Did we just witness something? Hold the line. What is this? Honestly, this looks scary. Or maybe they have that over there, over here, over there for the pigeons so they don't poo on it. I don't know. Everything is St. Caterina here. I think that people from Zaytun really love the name. I'm going out of the street where we entered, guys, and I just wanted you to have a look how beautiful it is going out of this street facing the church, St. Catherine, straight in front of you. Oh, the little one. Oi. <laughs> Likes to bite. <laughs> Me encountering doggies, and you guys know how much I love dogs. Now, there is a thing that I ask Katya, which is what do local people, people from Zaytun, are doing usually on their free time? And she told me that they like to go out, stay at the square, have a coffee all together. And I think that we are passing through a group of people who are doing just the same. Which is just enjoying outside, having a coffee, having a chit chat one to another. And ta-da! There they are. <laughs> and we came exactly again in the main square. Which looks absolutely amazing. I think I need to train the mark the words absolutely amazing for any time when I'm doing something about Malta. But honestly, look at this. Look how beautiful this looks like. I am leaving the square behind me and I'm entering in the streets around to see what's going on here. Over here. <laughs> there it is again. So guys, so far, my impressions are amazing. I am happy. I like Zaytun a lot. It is very traditional. And what I've noticed is that we are the only non-Maltese in the area right now, honestly. I haven't seen any foreign person walking around or going out of a bus or from a taxi or anything like that. So I have a feeling that this nearly 12,000 people that are living in Zaytun are mostly Maltese. So I did my research and if you would like to rent an apartment, a three bedroom apartment in Zaytun would cost less, will cost you somewhere between 700 and 800 euros. I'm also seeing the local trucks, which in many of my videos I'm mentioning guys, support local and anytime you would like to find some good fruits and vegetables, you will find them in trucks such as that one. What do we have here? Insurance. Okay. As you can see, the entire video is very, very quiet. We do have... Not really quiet because I'm getting out on the main road, but... <laughs> We're seeing a lot of Maltese traditional houses. And I'm entering into another street, which now really reminds me of... Oops, sorry. <laughs> of Ormi. Hold on, let me show you. There it is. Look at this beauty. How beautiful. Everything is so Maltese. Oh, 
Nice. This is someone rich. Or it's someone that just sold it and some rich foreign guy bought it. Oops. Thank you. Wait, I'm risking my life walking around the streets? <laughs> anyway, let's go and find the best pasticceria in Malta and see how that looks like and of course taste the Maltese pastizzi. <gasps> oh no, I just googled to see where is Roger's pasticceria bakery and we realized that only on Monday when I'm recording this video the pasticceria is closed. This was a flop. Yay, I found a pet and garden center as well, Tarnena. So I guess here you can get some stuff for your pets. And also I'm seeing that they have some plants as well. <laughs> Interesting. Oh la la, someone else who is also super rich. <laughs> and another one. What's that? I found another point of interest which is Jesus of Nazareth Church, an orphanage. <gasps> wow. By the way, I'm so happy to see these boards here that they have. Well done to the local council for doing all of this. I am so happy to see this type of improvements of having boards with the meaning behind the point of interest so that everyone can know what is it in front of them. And even though I noticed that Zeytun is not really that much famous for tourists, even though it's absolutely amazing. And I definitely recommend anyone who would like to see more... Hold on a minute, there is a bloody fly on my ear. Anyone who would like to come and see some well-preserved area, city, village, town, whatever, in Malta, Zeytun is the place. I am in love. It's really, really calming. It's very tranquil. Okay, talking about boards, I found another parish church of St. Catherine. And as I was saying, people are obsessed with this name here. <laughs> but why does it say old parish church? This church is dedicated to St. Catherine of Alexandria, although it is more commonly referred to as the Church of St. Gregory. Ah, okay, I get it. This is the other one that I was looking for. Okay. Uh-oh. What's that? Okay. What do we have? Cats. Hello, kitties. Oh, somebody brought them food. Nice. Hey, I'm a little bit scared here. Maybe it's because I'm in a cemetery. Stress. How did I end up here? I'm so sorry. Okay, I am out. So, the reason why I was there, guys, is because the church, as you can see, back in the days, used to be used as a watchtower overlooking the base of Marsa Scala and Marsa Schlock. And thank you so much, Katya, for giving me this information as well. I'm so happy that you came across my YouTube channel and you gave me all this information so that we can portray them to anyone who is viewing this video. Thank you. Ta-da! We are coming to the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and you got a glimpse of this historical area in Malta. And maybe I can name the video like that, one of the most historical cities in Malta. Anyway, we'll see how we're gonna name this video, but I am pretty sure that you had a lot of fun and you got some nice information about Southeast city in Malta. Katya, one more time, I would like to say thank you. From the heart, I honestly mean it. Thank you for giving me this guidance so that I can show to people what Zeytun has to offer, which is absolutely amazing city. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it down below. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you would like to see more videos about Malta. And until I see you in my next one, bye.